Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's project is working on another one of the prompts from Susanna. Susanna has the channel Vintage Blend Studios and each month Susanna is giving us a, a prompt which is connected to an old sewing technique. So this particular month we're going to be having a look at the classic log cabin. Now in years gone by when I was doing some quilting cut sew on the sewing machine log cabins you can play with color you can once you put them together cut them again and join them in different ways you can do so much with a classic log cabin but i've never tried hand sewing one so that's what i'd like to do now my inspiration came from this book from mandy patuli she is the most talented one of the most talented hand sewers uh, slow stitch artists around at the moment and I oh, just love her book I've ear tagged so many things in this book that just give me uh, inspiration now she works with a lot of old quilts and then layers her fabrics and her techniques on top so that was a piece from an old quilt she also shows how you could make something that looks like it's from an old quilt and that's what I want to try today now she also comes along and then embellishes it. I don't know if you can see it. Let me bring that up to the camera. See the little crosses? Let me hold that. There's little crosses going across there and there. So I'd like to have a little play with some slow stitch elements as well on top of it. So the first thing I want to do is I went looking for an embroidery piece to be my focal point in the center. And uh, I found... Let me pop the book out of the way. I found this. Now, I'm not sure of its history. It's not me. I'm not. I'm just not sure where it's come from. Whether it was just in a pack that I got from a, um, a garage sale. I, I just don't know. I, yeah, don't know. It may have been given to me in a pile of goodies from someone's clean out. And it just hasn't connected to me of where it actually came from. So my plan is to actually use this. And I sort of did a rough fold, assuming that I would stitch in the next piece there. And that would be the center. And I like it because when I first picked it up, I've got my scraps here for this whole project. This, this Tim Holtz fabric has this flower on it here it is it has this flower and like look at the resemblance there like you could not piece a more geometrical piece of fabric with this flower by itself let's be honest it doesn't do a lot for me but I tuck them away you never know when they will you know come in handy now I've got to be a little bit careful because if I cut it I don't want any of this to start fraying apart and I want to try and work out how I can have this edge highlighted in the piece so it's going to be very random I'm not sure how I'm going to do this because I've never done it before but I'm going to attempt to um, work this one into the center of my log cabin so I'm going to start with a needle and thread I probably should start with a smaller centerpiece, but like this little guy. But I really like this. So the plan is to attempt to stitch this into a log cabin. Now, technically, you should cut it out. Should I do that? I'm just thinking. The other thing is, how am I going to show that edge off as a feature? Hmm. This is going to be interesting. So I'm going to start by just laying down the fabric and get my first... Let me turn that around. Let's see how we go. I want it to be quite organic. I want it to be quite, um, you know, breaking all the rules. 
you know how it usually goes I've got a selvage there but I'm not concerned because I want it to maybe peek through in another layer I don't want to lose that little flower there that should be fine let's have a go let's just get the first one in if it doesn't look right well what have we lost a little old doily a little old embroidery that I have no idea where it's come from so I'm just going to start with just maybe a quarter inch seam that's sort of old school and I'm going to start with a, a back stitch just to get us started and then because we want it to feel a little rustic I'm just going to weave my needle in and out now when you watch some of the professionals do this they're so quick if I was to speed up any more than I'm doing I can guarantee this needle would go into my finger if not worse I'm getting a little crooked but that's okay it's actually going to be interesting to see how, how organic I can get it and that little blanket stitched edge over there I'm gonna to have to come up with a way that maybe that can show through to the side so it sort of sticks out I don't know if that's actually possible but anyway we'll We'll see how we go so let's just get this one side done just tiny little stitches you sort of need a long thin needle and you need um, it very very sharp so that it shimmies through the fabric so let's get rid of the pins flatten that out and then I'm just going to do a back stitch and then I'm gonna knot it off just with three little wraps okay step one I might re-knot it now so I'm ready to go again so let's trim that My pieces, my strips, if you will, are not going to all be the same. I want them all to be slightly different in size. So now I'm hoping if I fold that, that's it. That then gives me that piece attached. I'll finger press it at the moment, but I will end up coming through with a um, an iron just to really secure that down. All right, now question is, how do I make that appear on the top? I'm sure there'd be a tricky little way to do it. I need another piece of fabric. Let's see what we've got. Something with a bit of length. Something that the colour pops on. Don't want the same. Might bring this brown in. Just flipping through them all. Let's. I could probably make my life easier by cutting strips before I started this project but you know I don't like to be too organized I just like to wing it as they say and just see where we go now this is the crucial do I get to keep get to keep that edge because that would lay over there and then it would be exposed 
are hidden normally. Mm, I don't think I can. They're probably, I could probably, I think I need to cut this. Let's get ourselves down to size here. just do that why not is there any rules yeah well there is if you're doing a log cabin what if I just stitch along there and then let's think about this and then if the next piece let's say we use this floral the next piece comes in underneath that will work and then we're back to the traditional way of doing it. Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna give it a go. What the hang? If it looks horrific, this video you will never see, but most likely you'll see it because, you know, it's an adventure, isn't it? So I'm now going to top stitch this next piece instead of it being Now, question is, do I want to see that salvage? I sort of don't mind it. It will disappear a little on the next round. So, if I did decide I didn't want it, can I make those little holes that the big fabric looms? Yeah, I can make them disappear. So, I'm going to continue. And I'm going to... For now, invisible stitch that down because I might end up making a feature of it. I don't know. Let's just get it stitched. And that's it. Okay. This is going to work. So what I might do next, because this is very slow, where the running stitch that I did joining the first pieces, that was really quick. This is going to take a bit. Do I keep going and potentially bore you to tears? I think I might stop the video and what I'll do is I'll keep stitching along here and then uh, cut it. And then I'll use this floral piece. Try and get those numbers in position there. They might disappear a bit because of the they're in a corner. But anyway, I'm thinking ahead here. I might put this piece on next and then I'll come back. And then it should be just the away we go again all right so i will see you in a moment okay i'm back i'm back i have stitched that down and it worked i was able to maintain that um little edge the little blanket stitch edge and then yeah we're on our way so really really pleased i think that's going to be so much fun to have that included now what will I do with the remaining bits? I've got potential of working them in elsewhere because I will embellish the piece uh, once I get my actual little block sorted. Now, I need some more fabric. Let's grab something dark, I think. Dark and moody next. Let's cut ourselves a strip. These ones have got little little flowers in rows so I'm just going to trim this side up might as well take advantage of having that 
don't want it to overpower the piece too much, so I might just make it a fraction smaller than what I feel like I've been doing. That should be heaps. Okay, so away we go. I might just do that. And then that will be there. Okay. So let's pop a few little pins. Get our needle and thread. And stitch. This is fun. I've always wondered about doing quilting by hand. Like, not that I really would want to. But, you know, doing the whole... I might work from the back. Doing the whole quilt by hand like they used to could you imagine the work and i can see why um i was reading i think in mandy's book that the word quilting bee came from exactly that whole communities in a town or village would come together and all work on pieces or panels for the big quilt and then it'd just be all stitched together hence the word quilting bee and I just think that is so gorgeous. I'm doing a, a, probably a slightly smaller seam than I did earlier, which is breaking more rules, I'm sure. But what I want to do is make sure I don't lose that little bit of embroidery there. So I'm just going to put a little seam in and scoot, scoot past it, hopefully. That's going to work because it's not going into an actual quilt it's a decorative panel I think we can get away with a few rules being broken that probably isn't much of a seam for a quilt that would have wear and tear gosh when you watch YouTube if you go on YouTube and type in hand stitched log cabin block you will see some amazing amazing work there's a Japanese lady in particular I'm not going to insult her by saying her name because it, the woman who's interviewing her it looks like they're sitting at a booth at a craft fair somewhere and this lady has fil is filming her do exactly what we're doing and they're speaking Japanese from time to time but the lady filming sort of gives you a bit of a running commentary of what they're up to and this lady this Japanese artist she's a famous hand quilter in Japan I think it's Yoko oh, I'm not gonna say S-A-N-I-T-O or something I will link the little video that I found below and you'll see just how quickly she whips the stitches along she like rocks the needle she's also got have a look on her little finger the way she cuts the thread it is incredible it's a ring oh, maybe i'm the only one who know, doesn't know about these things and you guys are all sitting there going corinne that's been around for centuries probably has it's a, a ring she's got on her so the needle's rocking and the thread flicks through this ring with this little blade hanging off the side of it. I bet people who do embroidery for a living in the big fashion houses, I bet you they wear them. So you pop this ring on, it has this little hook coming out. So she rocks her needle through really quick and on her third finger, it might have, it's probably this finger, she has a leather ring here as well like a band and that is as she's holding the needle that's pushing the needle along with this leather strap and then over here is a metal ring with a hook so the thread hooks off of it anyway i will link the video now i'm going to try and get the video now and show you i won't show you the whole video you can have a, a proper little look at it 
but um, I might put it on. Don't you love the advertising? Get rid of the volume. Okay. Now, let me hold that up. Have a look at, see that brass ring on her thumb? There is a hook hanging off of that. See the hook right there? So she does a little back stitch. She's using a red cotton so that we can see it. So she does a little back stitch and then she rocks a needle. You watch this. It is fast. There she goes, rocking it, rocking it, tiny little stitches. And on this hand over here, within her fingers, you'll see that there is a leather band. So the back of that needle is being pushed along by that leather band. And then when she's done, she gets to the end, does a bit, see, cuts it off with that little hook. How cool is that? So I'll link that video below so you can have a little look at it. It's only a seven minute video so nice and quick and um, she is a famous hand quilter Un unbelievable i've just found that one video and i need to fall down that rabbit hole and have a little look at what this lady does because oh boy it is beautiful here we go we've got the start of our first panel lovely now I might do another strip, but I need to make sure it's quite thin because my book is, I like that blue actually, is long and narrow. What other fabrics do I have in here? Well, it probably feels a little bit better. So I'm gonna do a smaller strip. Oh, look, there's selvage here with butterflies on it. I'd lose them in the seam, wouldn't I? So I can't do that. Is that enough to get the distance? No. So let's cut another strip. But I'm going to make it a little narrow one this time. We only need a little bit. This is so liberating, not having to pull out the wheel, the cutting wheel and the mat and the, you know, all the palaver that goes with quilting. I'm finding this very liberating. Oh, I'll tell you what, hand sewing, we're just breaking all the rules. Isn't it great? So I'm just going to pin that now. Hardly any pressing. Mm. Just gotta love it. And once again, needle and thread. And away we go. I should grab my journal that these panels of pieces are going into and just double check some measurements sooner rather than later. So let's Start off with just that little back stitch. I don't even think that lady did a knot, to be honest, on that video. Of course she wouldn't. Her work could be so precise and beautiful that a knot would be not needed for sure. So she rocked. She rocked it. Oh. Hmm, there's a no rocking here. It's more of a slow, painful crawl. <laughs> and it'll be all in the way you hold it. I'm going to need to watch. I saw another video there pop up from that same interviewer 
of the same lady and they were doing basting stitch or just running stitch and it was tiny looked incredible this is fun if you haven't done this before guys just do a little panel and um Then you've got a little piece you could then embellish, you know, use it as a background and do some slow stitching on it and embellish it. It's very cool. Very quick too. See, you'd get out your board, you get out your cutter, your, your square, your acrylic measuring square or your ruler and start slicing all of your two inch or one inch strips. But no. There's a um, prompt coming up in the coming months with Susanna that is crazy quilting. That I'm going to do by hand as well, I think. Because this is very addictive. And we just do a knot to finish it off done. Now let's trim our excess fabric. I'm hoping it's nice and wonky because that's the look that I was hoping to achieve. Yeah, beautiful. Yep, plenty wonky there. I'll get a iron later and press open those seams. Those seams are very small, like, oh, geez. I'm not exactly a quarter of an inch. I'm barely a smidgen of a nothing. <laughs> I'm going to need new thread. So let's get that needle sorted. Hello, Fudge. You've come to join us. It's the story, Pussycat. Mm. Yeah. He's saying your needlework is pretty bodgy here. Yeah, see? Totally agrees. Okay. Let's find... Where are we? We've come down there. Like even this cutting off of that edge is... Pretty ordinary. Okay, so now we are coming down this side. So what will we use? I wouldn't mind putting in a piece of plain fabric, to be honest. I wonder if I got a piece that would slither off of here. No. What else have we got? There's a bit of that denim. That'd be a bit of fun. I could probably get a smidgen out of there. Let's do that. It's not denim. It's a woven woven napkin. Table napkin. And I've been using it and using it. It's just one of those neutral sort of tones. You can never know what's the front and what's the back, so it doesn't matter. Let's just get this pinned. And stitch it down. And away we go again. How easy is that? So I just do a little bit of a back stitch here just to secure that thread. Oh, fudgy. And away we go. As simple as that. Get that pin out of my way before there's a an accident. So with this style of work, we can use all sorts of different 
fabric textures too to make it interesting you could use you know anything because it's background a uh, free form panel my stitches are a little big I've got to just concentrate here and do itty bitty stitches I think the secret is to have your thumb on your opposite hand actually guide the fabric a little bit so it's finding that rhythm where you don't push the needle into your fingernail but your fingernail is moving the fabric up and down in front of the needle gosh imagine getting as fast you'd ha you'd have to get fast you'd take you forever to do a quilt if you were plugging along like I am here plugging not plugging I'll have to find out if she uses a particular type of needle, that Japanese lady. I'm sure there would be a trick to the trade. There always is, isn't there? You go and you see a demonstration at some of these shows and you're like, oh, is that how they do that? And you think you know what you're doing, but then you're like, oh, fudgy, please. You're, you're interrupting. It's late afternoon and Fudge is like, where's my supper? The sun is setting. So you usually hear him in the morning because he's like, I've had my breakfast. Are we going to sit down now? Now you're hearing him in the afternoon because it's now supper time. So let's just trim that off and fold it out. There we go. I love it. I love it. I think I need a little bit more Tim Holtz fabric. Where oh where are you? Do we have a morsel? Here's a morsel. Hello fudgy. Don't jump up. So I've got some lace in here. I can do some lace embellishing. Will this piece fit? Yes it will. Is that too same same? Fudgy please. Oh, I think I think I might use it, you know. Now we do need to after this row I must get the book because what'll happen is I'll end up being too big. Would have to be okay still, but I must. Fudgy, please. He's trying to get up on my lap with his claws. Okay, away we go again. So once I get this panel, well, let's call it the background. And it just so happens it's a decorative piece in itself. Once I get this panel, this background sorted, in the next video, oh, fudgy, stop it. In the next video, we will look at embellishing. So I will do some top stitch. Um, I'll add some lacy bits. We'll just pretty much play with it. So that's what I tend to do next. This other flower that's left from that little panel, I will most likely find a home for that because I feel like it needs to be with, with it. Fudgy. I need to give it a good iron as well. There we go. How quickly did that come together? Admittedly, my center wasn't as big as it probably could have been. 
well, I think Susanna's center is two inches by two inches. So just as a reference, two inches by two inches. So this little piece here technically could have been the center. So like usual, Susanna are breaking all the rules. She'll be just shaking head going. That's so typical of that girl. Off on another tangent. I'm so pleased I'm doing this project because like I think I've said in other videos, it's just bringing back into the forefront things we used to do. And I'm applying what I am doing now to it, which I just think is fudgy pleats, which is really, really fun. He, he wants to come up. Oh, fudgy. Oh, so there's a, there's a tail, there's a leg. Oh, fudgy. Quick little cuddle of a pussycat. Pop him on the lap. Now I can't reach my needlework. He's not going to be happy with that. And he's going to come walking through. Here he comes. Walking through. Fudge. Seriously. Don't bump the camera. Off you go, pussy. He's happy now. He's had his little bit of fuss. A bit of fudgy fussy. So what was I saying? Yeah, these, these techniques that Susanna are having us all revisit. It's really good because like I'm thinking it's it's like bringing something we used to do into our current style and our current learnings. I was pretty young when I was doing this and I was following the technique to a T. I was often in a class and you dare not break the mold because it was all a precise, precise craft where this slow stitch is just opening up a whole can of worms. Okay, let's trim that. And fold it out. That's good because that piece of fabric was one that caught my eye right at the very beginning because it has um, the same sort of design as the flower. So I had lost it in the pile that is on my desk and I'm pleased that it is back. Now, let's get the book before we get too far ahead of ourselves. And I might just plug my iron in so we can give it a, um, a bit of an iron. Fudgy's now on the chair. Oh, this is becoming a crazy video. Fudgy, little puss. Okay, he's gonna pat the cat five times. Okay, pussy, off you go. Now, let's, let's just make ourselves a little bit of room here. Our panel to one side there's another pin let's get our little book and work out where it's going to go and what size now that piece was quite large so if we're already too big oh, oh, oh. look at that we're so close if not there for goodness sakes now I've run out of space I can't do any more so I can't have it that way I'd have to have it this way. No fudgy. Right, so we are, look at that, we're at our limits. So I'd have to stop there, stop there, and I have a tiny little edge that I can do, which I'm thinking will be some lace. So let's have a look at this lace because that's probably about all I've got. So if that was to go on there, 
or something like that. That that is it. I actually like it up there. So I want this to be on a piece of calico too. So what I'm going to do now is close the book, put the book away, and I'm going to iron this panel so I know it's sitting properly. Well, that was over before I knew it. Hmm. I'm so going to be doing this again. Thank you, Susanna. So I need a piece of calico that is exactly this size, but I can be a little bit taller on the one side. So that's how our piece will be. Now, calico, good question. Do I have any handy? No, I don't. It's in the next room. Of course it is. Of course, of course it is. Um, yeah, no, it is. I have pretty much run out of calico and I bought a new bolt of it and the actual bolt is still wrapped in plastic sitting in the next room. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to grab it, unwrap it and cut myself the piece or rip myself the piece that um, will do the job. And uh, I'll be back. All right, guys, won't be a moment. Hi, guys, I'm back. Now I have my brand new bolt of calico. I just buy my calico from Spotlight. Um, whenever it's on special, I seem to grab another bolt of it. But I did get to the point where I was down to my last few centimeters and a few days went by and before I knew it, I was like, gee, I must get there and get some calico. So I've got my new piece now and I'm ready to go. So I can now pull myself out a nice piece for the background. Remembering that I can go just about the width of that lace and it'll still fit in my book. Get rid of those paper scissors. I'm sick of picking them up and using them. So let's, I just ripped the um, salvage off. So I might as well do it now while it's, and I'm just making my panel a fraction bigger than what I need everywhere else. Oh, love the sound of ripping fabric. Is it just me? Love that sound. Cutting fabric too. You know when you're at the dressmakers, well not the dressmaker, a fabric store, and they've got their big shears and they've rolled out your fabric. So you hear that lump, lump, lump as the bolt rolls out across the table. So it goes bump, bump, bump. Then they pull all this fabric out and then they get their big shears and you hear that, that crunching and not these, these are squeaky. These things need oil, but you know that, ah, oh, that sound. Oh, I love it. I love that sound. Okay. So like usual, the calico is a bit whoopy. So I'm just going to Give it a tug in its opposite direction to the whoop and hopefully it'll come squarish. It never really does, but it makes me feel like I've done something to improve the situation. So there's my piece. It's going to be sitting there. Let me come up a little bit in the camera so you can get a full view. And remembering we can add some lace. Now, I think I was going to add it at the bottom, wasn't I? Pussy, stop it. I don't even think this is big enough. I think I probably should have had a bigger piece. But we'll see how we go. It's definitely going to have lace there. So I feel confident I can cut that. Let's grab the book. The journal. Find our spot and it's going to go 
there. Yeah, that's fine. That will be just fine. And then that will pick up the top there. Now that's good. Okay. All right, so get that back. Now, if we were doing a quilt and we were putting the wadding in and then uh, the backing fabric, the next step we would need to do, and that is tacking it all down. So I used to do a Y stitch. But now we all do these little invisible stitches because it takes longer and we just are wanting more to do. But back in the day, I would have put a stitch here and then scooted up to here. Fudgy, please, can you leave the room? You're a noisy pussy. I would do a stitch here, jump up to here, another stitch, jump up to here, another stitch, etc., etc. And I would have pinned it all with um, safety pins. First, I would have spent hours going around pinning everything so it was nice and flat. Fudgy, you're still here. I'm sorry, everyone. This pussycat is demanding attention. And of course, he's getting it because we're talking back to him. Okay, so there's my piece. And then I will just go through and stitch it down with invisible stitch. Now, if I was ditch stitching and creating a proper quilt, well, then I would um, remove the tacking stitch, but we don't. So all I'm going to do <clears throat> is work along those little seams. I might as well take advantage of them to hide my little invisible stitching. So that'll take me a little bit of while as I scoot along and tack it all down. That'll really help those seams to indent so that the quilt panel feels like it's, you know, got that little raised bit, if that makes sense. So that'll be my next task is ditch stitching the entire piece to that calico. Now I could have put some wadding in there as well. I think Susanna is doing that because I think I read on the instructions to have a little piece of wadding. But I'm not going to bother because that's just bulk that my, um, my little book doesn't need. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just go to this edge just so you get the general picture of how I attach the two layers. And then I just want to have a little play with that remaining piece of quilt. Do we use it or do we not? Not quilt, embroidery. <clears throat> Gee, it's hard to think and talk at the same time. So that seam is now secure to the back. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is embellish. So let's assume that those pins aren't there that I'm just placing. Definitely going to have this piece of lace popping in there and I might even just tuck it under. Fudge, please. Just so it peeks out. It's not such an obvious band, if you will. So I'll pin that there. So I'm liking the look of that. Now I might actually grab some of that Tim Holtz fabric and see if there's something there that jumps out because it's full of imagery. 
There might be something there I can pull out to add to this because I'll be able to do um, some boro stitch, you know, lines of running stitch. I'll be able to do some internal stitching. But this little guy, what are we going to do with him? I'm going to fussy cut him out because I would like to see him join the, the piece. Be a shame to have him just disappear into my room. We might as well grab him and use him. I don't know how much time we've got left because I've chopped this video into three little pieces. So I've got to piece it together. I think I had 20 minutes when I came back to you the third time and we're eight minutes in. So I've just got to keep an eye on that. So what we might do is just throw a few little morsels down on the fabric. Pussycat. Mm, I could make it look like it's continuing on by putting it there. That's interesting. Let's have a look at some of these decorative things. Words are always good. I'm going to cut that out. Looks like a label. Maybe that. Gosh, you'll be thinking this cat is poorly hardly done by. But he's not. He's looking at me looking quite fit and healthy. And anyone would think he was, you know... On Struggle Street but he's not. Is there an opportunity to add that in? Because we've got these little edges we could potentially tuck some random items in just to make it a little bit more interesting. I don't mind that. We'll leave it there for a moment. This has a floral Piece. Sort of works too, doesn't it? What could we do with this? Hmm. I like how the flowers are at this bottom corner coming up. But maybe it's got to come down from there. I do some extra in about there. Mm. Okay, I'm going to fussy cut this out. And see if it looks like it works. I think it will. I like, I really like this fabric. And I've had it in that box for the whole project, thinking it could be a potential feature. Fudgy. By the end of this, you'll be like, fudgy, please. Okay, it's a bit blocky at the moment. I would want to trim in a little closer just to push push that blue back a bit it just gives the flowers more room to pop but this has potential but I am going to run out of time this is a whole nother video Let's position it and then I might be able to go looking for some more um, elements that could be worked in with this to really embellish my block. So you can see how the log cabin can quickly become a background for you. 
and then slow stitch away. Okay, that's pretty good. So how will we do this? My first instinct was to add it to the bottom. But I sort of feel like it's too, too much of a line. I might get rid of those pins there because they can always come back in. I don't mind it there. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of ideas on placement. Could go anywhere. What I think I'll do is I'm going to end this video as part one and I'm going to just dodge off this evening and I'm going to stitch this all down so I know it's in position. That'll give me time just to rest the mind a little. I, I do like that there. That's going to stay. That'll give me time to rest the mind, get um, some of these basic elements down and then the next video I'll come back and we'll plan the embellishing side of things. How do we take this to the next level? We still have some little morsels here of this beautiful back stitch, um, blanket stitch that someone's done. So I don't want to discount that opportunity. And um, yeah, so I need to catch up with the next stage, basically. All right, guys, I'm going to put those pins back into position. I'm going to leave it at that as episode one. I'm going to go and give Fudgy a cuddle. Probably his supper, because I think that's what's underlying here. And I'm going to stitch down in all the ditch stitches right through. And I need to start thinking about, you know, what happens next to make this piece interesting. Okay, everyone, look after yourselves. And I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.